Funding for Painting Journeys is provided by Veritas. Financial knowledge is power. Be empowered. God's beauty is all around us, and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello, and welcome to Painting Journeys. My name is Kitty Lynn Klish, and once again, we're going to journey across the canvas. I took a very special trip, uh, a three-week road trip with my granddaughters and my son, and I for the next few episodes, we're going to be giving you some highlights of the places that we stopped. Um, but before we go there, I want to just show you how I completed the covered bridge. Our last, in our last episode, I was working on the covered bridge in Suwamanco, Wisconsin. Now, covered bridges are soon becoming a thing of the past. So this was a real find of, uh, to come upon one that was so in such good shape and it looked like it had been refurbished and the land around it, everything just seemed to have a, a beautiful glow. And even though it was right across the street from the new zoo in Suamico, I chose to paint the covered bridge for you. So there it is, all finished up for you. I hope you like it. And now, let me tell you a little bit about the petrified forest. Um, we traveled along, we went through Missouri, of course, and, and different places, um, uh, getting to Arizona. But, um, and we weren't going to really stop here at the petrified forest. We weren't going to stop, it was just kind of like at a, a last minute decision to stop, but I'm really glad we did because I found out some really inf interesting information I want to uh, share with you. Yeah. So here we are, and uh, off in the distance now, um, looking at the photograph. Now, I must tell you that this photograph does not do the area justice because it, it was so much more colorful and more beautiful, but it was the best one I could take. But anyway, off in the distance up in here, behind this particular area right, right in through here, is the Painted Desert, and you can see that. Um, in 1907, well, I guess it was in about 1888, settlers came upon uh, this area and uh, of petrified uh, trees and the painted desert. And then in 1907, President Roosevelt turned it into a national park, um, of which without his having done that, we would have lost a lot of the beauty that we have in the United States today. So anyway, this, what we're going to be painting today, what I chose as my subject to paint today for you is the petrified, or the, it's called the granite bridge. And it's a, it's a tree that perhaps as far back as 200 million years ago uh, was in a, in a swamp-like area, wetlands, and uh, floods came and it was buried and, and more and more things happened and layers upon layers upon layers until finally it actually turned into granite. It's totally petrified. This right under here is a cement girder that they put underneath the tree to, to try to help keep it from breaking. As the, as the um, well, as I'm showing you in this picture uh, right now, the, the water running under this has washed away the, uh, this area down below here, and it will eventually wear all of this away. 
you know, maybe in thousands of years. The water is the one thing that, um, that nature cannot control. It keeps changing our landscapes wherever. So anyway, this is the granite bridge and um, some cliffs and things. And, and so I better get busy and I'll talk to you more about what I saw there um, as we go along. Okay, um, don't want that to be quite so dark, but I do love the purple in the sky. Um, and I'm going to just try to work a little, a little faster here so that I can get to the good part. Yeah, that's where we want to go, to the good part. We'll have that little bit of blue swirling through here. I think that's the most yummy color of blue. Yeah. Okay. I have just a regular palette today. It's just, you know, my usual palette. I never vary. I think each artist has their own that they really um, like and, and work with. They become used to. They know what to expect. You put the colors together and you know what to expect. And that's very important to an artist to be able to determine beforehand or have some idea beforehand just what the outcome is going to be. Otherwise, it just becomes a series of happy accidents. And a few of those are wonderful, but <laughs> you don't want to base your whole painting on them. <laughs> that's for sure. So anyway, we had a wonderful time. This was such an informative, great trip. It was a chance for my granddaughters, they're 12 and 9, and my son, who is soon going to be 45. And um, it was a chance for all of us to bond. And, you know, I mean, what else do you do when you're in the car for 8, 10, 12 hours a day? But it was wonderful. I had my, I had some, some uh, second thoughts on this whole trip. But I wanted the girls to have the opportunity that their dad and their uncle had when we lived in California. Every year we'd drive back to Wisconsin to see relatives, and those boys were always being taken every summer on this road trip. And the sad part about the road trip is, of course, we were younger and young family and we'd have to travel really fast and drive straight through. And there was no stopping at, um, you know, a, a park or anything like that. There just, it just didn't, it just wasn't, there wasn't time. And... So I wanted my granddaughters and my son to see what they'd been missing by taking the time and doing it right and seeing what they had been missing. Okay, I really like that sky. I'm going to lighten it just a, a little bit more for you and because I want the colors of the desert, the painted desert right in here, to really show up. So I'm going to lighten that just a little bit more. And before the, but before the paint sets up, I'm going to take my soft brush and I'm just going to gently stroke down because the sky goes down and around. So you naturally want the paint brushes, the paint, paint um, brushing, um, oh, strokes rather, um, to not go across because that catches the eye. So if I want this to go way back and look very far back, I'll show you what I do. I just very lightly, very, very lightly run this brush. I, I, it's so, I'm touching it so softly, it's like the, a butterfly's kiss in the palm of your hand. Um, there we go, and then wipe it, and hit it again just a couple in a couple places, 
and there. Now it really looks like it's going down and around behind the sky, I mean behind the land. Since the, um, the world is round and not flat, that sky has to go down and around and behind. Okay, now we're going to get into that desert a little bit. But first of all, we have this very blue, dark looking uh, mesa uh, right back in here. And, um, oh, and, and to explain this a little bit to you, what I have done here is I've done a very rough sketch, sort of in the colors that I plan on using. I just wanted it, you know, what I did is, I call it like mapping it out. I just sort of mapped it out on my canvas to make sure that um, what I was going to get. I didn't include everything because there may be some things on the canvas that I don't include in the in the I'm in the picture that I don't include in the canvas. Okay, can you tell I'm excited today? I am excited. I'm sorry if I'm stumbling over my words a little bit. Okay, here we go. Now we go with that mesa. And it's way back there, and it's nice and light. We don't really see it a lot. And then there's a little bit of dark that's coming back here. And let me get a different brush. And I'm just going to come over this and soften that down. And there again, that gives it the feel that it's way back there. No hard edges in the back. There we go, nice and soft. All right, now we have the painted desert. Um, I'm painting from the back forward, so I want to get the, some of that desert in there. Now I'm going a little brighter than what you see here in the photograph because I was there and I know that that's the way it looked. So that gives me a nice, a nice um, opportunity to, well, and not only that, but you know, if we were going to make a photograph, copy this photograph, it wouldn't really be very pretty. Because photographs, if you want to photograph, you use a camera just like I did up above. There we go. Now we got a painted desert started in there. You don't need much, just a, just a little touch here and there. There we go. Some darks maybe. Or should we lighten it a little bit? Yeah, maybe we should lighten it a little bit. There we go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that looks nice. All right. Now we have this dark, this dark kind of a, a green line, and it's light coming right here. Let me see here. Let's mix up some nice light. And I see I didn't put one color on my palette that I need. So let's see how ingenious I can be and try to make that color with the colors that I do have on my palette. Alrighty. Mm, maybe that's not too bad. Right in here we have a little bit of light. And of course, there's a lot of, of, of green stuff and dark stuff. This is a little, should be a little lighter. Little trees and cactus, not cactus, but brush-like. This really isn't considered like the desert where you have the cactuses in Arizona. This is more just like high country, high plains country. So that's coming down there like so. 
and this is coming up here like so and that's coming down you know there was a building there that was um, partially had been partially restored and it was this large lodge uh, it seems as though people had been inhabiting this area for um, as far back as they can tell right now um, 1300 years and this large lodge at one time um, had over a hundred rooms in it and um, 200 plus people lived in it and that was really interesting to see there were and there were other things too there were small smaller buildings that were um, there and just in in the just sitting there just you know just now I don't know if these were restored or or what but they were interesting little um it's too bright interesting little uh, buildings that were um around and just kind of nestled in in these little gullies and and uh, creek beds, and it was it was really quite the place. I think one of my favorite stops as we drove through this, and you know, it's right off of I forty, so it's it's really really very easy to get to. The park you only drive twenty seven twenty eight miles south to get to it, and it makes a nice circle so you can get right out. Um, anyway, the um, one of my, one of the places that I thought was really great was this. Um, they call it Newspaper Rock, and it had all these um, rocks that had crumpled and crumbled and fallen down and everything. But the way they had fallen, you could still see the, um, the petroglyphs, the writings that were etched into the rocks by the natives that had, li had lived there at that time. Um, so I'm, I'm showing you right now, I'm showing you a picture of, a sign, of the sign that shows the, the different um, symbols that are carved on the rock that is down below that we're, that we're looking at. And now I'm showing you a picture of the actual, of a close-up of the actual rock. It's very interesting how to think how they, how, I mean, what, what tools must they have used to carve into the rocks like this and make these, to make these uh, petroglyphs and the, and, the, and the stories that they must tell, the symbols. What do they stand for? I mean, of course, there's a hand and a circle, and and you know you can you can read a lot into it, you know, if you have a good imagination. Um, I think I think that um, very very interesting place, wonderful place. All right, now let me focus back on this a little bit here. Can we have a dark? of a dark rock up here in the distance, but he has a little bit of red to him. Okay. All right. Let's see now, and he's coming up above right in there. It needs to be darker so that he shows a little bit better. Whoa. 
too dark to cut that guy down. All right. By taking a flat brush and laying it down, I softened the paint and made it go into the, um, I'm working on canvas board. Now I want to put a little bit of a, a, but anyway, I pushed it in and made it look a little better. Now I'll put a little bit of orange on the side of it here to show that he's there. Okay. All right, and I want to darken the bottoms of these trees a little bit here. And then there's some more right over in here. A little bit up in there. And then there's quite a grouping right in here. So we'll just kind of scumble it on. We're trying to work fast because we want to we want to give you something that, well, actually, I can't wait to get to the, uh, to the um, granite bridge. I just think that's so cool. When I saw the sign that said granite bridge, I said to my son, oh, stop here, stop here. We have to stop here. I want to see that. There we go. OK. I think that uh, as I'm coming forward, I'm seeing that I want a little more color in that desert back there, in the painted desert. I want a little more color in there. There we go. That should come down like that. And then I think what I'm going to do is take my knife and scrape up a nice amount of paint here. Can you hear that scratchy sound? <laughs> I know, it sounds awful, doesn't it? Like fingernails on a blackboard. There we go. Okay, now, I think what I'm gonna do here is I want to take this and make that look more like the desert there and have that come up there so that we can see that the other is beyond it. Then I'm going to wipe this out right in here. And what is that green brush? OK, now we've got more. Well, we've got some trees that have a little bit of purple in them. That's good. Whoops. Just start a new pile here. They're kind of a, they look like they're kind of a purple gray. Come on now. There we go. OK. Now that's going to, yeah, that's going to be pretty. They look like actual trees right here and coming right over in here. Those look like actual trees. There we go. And there again, because it's in the background, I want to soften the edges. Because that's a long ways away. Maybe I'll put a, a nice little um, tree trunk there on it. I know that's detail, but I'm kind of doing finish as I go. Yeah, there we go. Nice little tree trunk in here. Another one over here. There we go. Makes more sense that way. And we'll take that brush again and get that lavender lightened up just a little bit. And ooh, that's pretty. That's a pretty color. Let's see what that looks like on there. If that doesn't make it pop a little bit, well, it sure does. That's pretty. Yeah. There we go. OK. 
Okay. All right, now I'm gonna get this green in. But first of all, I wanna take my knife again and I wanna make that desert spot. This is where I have to mix up the paint because I didn't bring the right color with me. I don't know why I forgot that. It's a staple on my on my palette and so let's see here. You know, it's it's good to stretch yourself. Every once in a while you run across a a, a problem in the painting and you have to stretch yourself and and that's a good thing. That's what's happening to me right now. Oh, I think I like this, so I think I came up with something that looks pretty darn good. Now you notice I'm working with the knife as well as the brush because I, I want that rugged um, feel of those of all those different textures that those rocks have. Now we're coming right up here is a rock and it's got some dark in front of it and then there's a little bit of light right in here that's coming down. Mm -hmm. And then this is just a little bit more red right over in here and maybe we'll just have some of this coming into this a little bit to kind of make that look a little more like it's um, movement. Yeah, okay, I like that. Um, let's see. Uh, just some, make these guys just a little brighter here. I'm just kind of poking at the canvas right now. I don't want, you know, I'm not, it's not, I'm not painting things. I'm painting my impression of shapes and values. Okay, and that little tree right there, it's coming down in front. So we're going to make it come down right in front, right in here. There we go. Okay, let's see here. I thought I brought, there I did, yeah, good. All right, now I want to take a darker color that is in my shadow color. And I want to put that right in here. And that's going to be right in here too. You see this right in here? Yeah, that's what we got right there. Okay, and that's a little darker right there, and that's coming down quite a ways. And I can't believe it, we're already halfway through the show. My wonderful cameraman, Richard, just gave me the, the note here. Or halfway, but I'm not halfway across the canvas, so I better get my rear in gear, huh? Okay. First of all, I want some more of that light to go across the top of this here. And a little lighter so that we can see. There we go. 
And, okay, probably thinking a little too much about um, detail here. This is coming down more like that. And then we do have some areas in here that are darker. Okay, and that gets darker as it goes down. So I'm really glad that you joined me today. Um, I, I'm happy to take you on this journey to the Petrified Forest in Arizona. It was a great trip, and I hope through my painting and the photographs that, I'm, that I've showed you, I hope that you can get just a, a, a small feel of what it was like to be there. There was many, many, there were many, many things that um, I didn't get a chance to see um, there. The time would not allow it, but um, it was quite an experience, believe me. I love, in, I'm interested in anything that shows, you know, how things were years and years and years ago. I think that's fascinating. And it's so uh, marvelous that we are doing as much as we are to protect these areas. Um, there was a wonderful group of young students that were there and a female ranger that didn't look a whole lot older than them. She was busy showing them the ropes and telling them not, where not to, to stand and, and walk and how important it was to, to leave no footprint. and. It was it was very in, you know very in, informative and and it was just a, a wonderful talk that she gave to these young people and you could tell that they were listening to her so intently and that it really mattered to them what they were doing. Um, that was that was really heartening to know that their our younger generation is going to carry on and protect these places for us so that we'll have them for years and years to come to visit. That was very exciting, moving. That's those trees down there, I'm just kind of Okay, now I think we need some more darks in here. To come up, there's a lot of dark on there. There we go. And then right in here is uh, the dark purple again from the shadow. this area right here. And I believe that is coming about like this and coming down. That's a little higher right there. Okay. I don't want that to be quite so sharp. I'm going to wipe that off a little bit there and have it come out like that a little bit more. There we go. 
And then this is light up here again. Right in here. And in here, it's kind of light. There's a light spot right here, and this is coming down right there. Whoops. And I don't know about this dead tree right here. He's not petrified, that's for sure. But it won't hurt to put him in there. I'll just put a few indications of him having been there. And yeah, we saw him. Wasn't the best thing we saw that day, but he was there. Oh, the funniest thing happened, I have to tell you. There, there were crows in the parking lot. And the crow, um, this one particular crow especially, had a very funny gait. He would take a couple steps and then he would hop. And he was favoring one leg and he was, he was mooching for food, you know, begging for food from people in the parking lot. And a lot of people were feeding him because he was cute. He was really, I mean, he was really good at his little act of... Um, trying to beg people into f to feeding him. Um, anyway, he took a liking to my youngest granddaughter, and he started following her everywhere and uh, around the parking lot, and it was really cute. I got some adorable pictures of that, but I'm not going to bore you with the family pictures. But anyway, it was really cute. Um, he just hopped around begging, and you'd give him something and then he'd hop away and then he'd act like he was crippled and do his little dance. It was really kind of funny. There we go. All right, I think we're getting a kind of a desert-like look there. This over here is quite light. Almost need a bigger knife here. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Okay. There's some rocks right in there. is coming like this. You notice how when I put the shadow on, I go up and down, and then when I am putting the top on, then I go back and forth. And that helps just describe the movement. Alrighty, let me see here. So I'm not going to put this in. I think it. I don't think it enhances anything. I'll just put another green bush there instead. There is a some dark rocks right here standing upright. 
Um, there's a little one right in there. And right over in here. And then we'll put some dark in, uh, underneath the tree here. All right, now I'm going to put the, start on my log, my bridge. Let's see here. Okay, I'm quiet because I'm I'm thinking so hard. I want this to be turn out really nice for you. And I don't usually work with a palette knife, but I'm really enjoying it today. Um, and I want this to turn out nice. So okay, now nice light on the top. So I'm th quiet because I'm thinking. Okay, now this is going to be the top of it. It needs to be lighter. And somebody, if you can see this right here on the picture, somebody actually, there's a, you can't see it, but there's a barrier right here. And there, um, um, so that you're not supposed to go down on this path and, and stand on this. And somebody has actually crept over here and tried to uh, dig up, uh, pull the, the um, petrified rock and take a pieces of it. You know, some people and their kids, huh? Oh, well. All right, let's see if we can get this to look a little better here. All right. And that is a little bit redder. Okay, and this is coming over here and into it. And oh my goodness, now we only have 15 minutes left. Where does the time go? I wish I could just have a couple of hours to spend with you doing this and then I wouldn't rush so much. Okay, now this um, cement girder that it seems to be holding this um, agate tree up is right under here and it's really quite dark right there. So let's see here. We need a lot more paint here, kitty. Got to get it moving. 
just have 15 minutes. That's not too much time. And we only have half of the canvas covered. Hmm. Okay, now it's a little lighter. A little bluer. Almost has a kind of a, a of a reddish reddish glow to it. It's kind of a pretty color. Let's see if we can pump it up a little bit and make it really make it really sing here. A little white maybe in it. Okay, let's see here. That's one thing when, you, when you're working with a palette knife, you really use a lot more paint. Um, and I think we've got a little more of a reddish glow in here. We need to pull that out. There we go. Yeah. Okay. And this down here is quite dark. There's a little square right in here that's very dark where that meets and that meets there. And then these rocks right here are coming down and they're a little darker. Right in there, that shadow. A little bit of a cast shadow right in there. And the breaks coming through there. And I just want to make this look a little rounder here. I think we could probably do it if we go like this a couple places. And then drag it back. There, that looks a little rounder. Okay. All right, then maybe a little bit more light in here so that this doesn't look quite so. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Some brightness to that. There we go. All right, now let's see here. Right here we've got sand color. And that's coming down right there, right over in here and down. And, oh, come on. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm not gonna be able to finish this for you. I'm gonna have to take it home and finish it in my studio, studio at home, I, I had really hoped to get further along today, but we have 10 minutes left here. We'll see what we can get done, but I don't know. We don't want to ruin the painting by rushing and making it too, looks too strange. All right, let's see. Um, well, the, all of this down below, is a very dark green, if we can get that on with some light over it, maybe we can still get this, save this puppy, pull him out of the fire. Yep. Okay, I think my brush would probably be quicker. Where's my brush? I'll take this brush and 
just suck it to it. There we go. There, oh, that's quicker. And that's darker over in here because there's a, a block holding it up right there. Some kind of a girder thing or something. Have <laughs> you know, ever noticed how I don't know the names of things? I just, um, I, you know, and I don't really even care. I don't care that I don't know the names of things. They're just colors and shapes, and uh, to me, I, I don't, I don't really care. They're okay. Is it looking like a bridge? I think it is. You could probably put, take some of this and put a few little highlights across here. I gotta get away from that bridge and keep working on what I'm working on here. All right, let's see here. Okay, so we're putting that dark green in on the bottom because we're trying to show you what that's gonna look like when we've got those trees underneath there. There's some trees right in here. Um, we'll have to come back and hit that with a little bit of the, of the um, lighter green that we're seeing. And it's coming right up on top of this. Come on, I want something here brighter. Okay, and then this is darker, a little darker green right in here and it's going up underneath this. And over here. Okay. Alrighty. Are we gonna do it? Are we gonna get this covered? If we do, it'll be a miracle. It's going like this. This is coming down like that, and that's coming down like that. All right, we're gonna get the big knife. Get the big guy. Hurry, hurry. Okay. And here we go. And this is coming up like this and coming down like that. Five minutes to go. I'm gonna make it. Are you with me? Are you still with me? Yes. Say yes, we're with you. We're in this together. We're gonna do it. We're going to do it. We're going to accomplish it. Yes, we are. And we don't care how messy it is because that part we can fix. We just want to get that canvas covered.
<laughs> you know, I am just having a blast. And I, I, I'm really glad that you, that you join me today and watch me as I play crazy lady with my palette knife and my paints. <laughs> this is really a lot of fun. I don't know which was, which was more fun, the trip, being there, or being here with you and um, painting my version of the painted desert and the granite bridge and okay you know it's pretty colorful <laughs> that's a good thing there we go all right just this little tad right in here Okay, and there's some greenery here. Okay. And little and we'll put a couple little lumps in it. Um let me see here. We'll put a little lump. We'll put a little light right in here. And We'll put a little dark right in here. And then we'll put some light right here coming along. And over in here, some color. And we'll put just a little more light right in here. I want this to really pop right in there. Well, you have been watching Painting Journeys. My name is Kitty Lynn Klish. It was a joy to be with you today. I hope that you'll tune in for our next episode when I think we're going to go to the Grand Canyon. How does that sound? Okay, catch you next time. Bye-bye for now. Funding for Painting Journeys is provided by Veritas. Financial knowledge is power. Be empowered.